Welcome to Electron Online and now for some right angle triangle basics. So here we have our typical right angle triangle. The, way, the reason why we know this is a right angle is because we have the little symbol there that indicates that's a 90 degree angle. Here we have the angle that's indicated theta. Now of course there's two other angles. We can call this the angle theta or we can call that the angle theta. Again, theta is just simply a Greek symbol. We can call it alpha, beta, gamma, we can call it any letter we want. Theta is very typical for angles so we go ahead and use that here. But again, we can cause this, we can call this theta, or we can call that theta. As a matter of fact, we don't even have to orient the triangle like that. We could orient the triangle like this. Or we can call this theta instead of that theta. So let me go ahead and show you some examples like this. So let's say that I have the same triangle as over here, and I call this the right angle, and I call this theta. Now what we're going to do here is we have three sides. One of the sides is considered the hypotenuse. This is the longest of the three sides. The other two sides are called the opposite side and the adjacent side. So every triangle has a hypotenuse, an opposite side, and an adjacent side, and they're all relative to the angle. So in this particular case, notice the hypotenuse is indeed the longest of the three sides. Pythagorean theorem says that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So for example, hypotenuse squared is equal to the opposite side squared plus the adjacent side squared. So that's definitely the, the theory of hypotenuse. But in trigonometry, there's another relationship between these, and that's why we have to be able to label these sides correctly. So in the case over here, notice that this is the longest side. This is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So here's the right angle. The side directly across the right angle is called the hypotenuse. So here's the right angle, so this therefore is called the hypotenuse. So I'll call the hypotenuse H right there. In this triangle right here, again, since that's the right angle right here, this would have to be the hypotenuse. All right, now what about the adjacent side? Notice here that we call this the adjacent side because it's adjacent to the angle. It touches the angle, so to speak, or it's adjacent to it. In this particular case, which is the adjacent angle? Uh, I should say the adjacent side. It's this side right here because here's the angle and it's adjacent to the angle. So we can call this the adjacent side. So adjacent side. And let me use capital letters because my handwriting is a little different from most. So here, this would be the adjacent side. And that makes this the opposite side, just like this is the opposite side. This side right here is what we call opposite of the angle. It doesn't touch the angle, it's directly opposite from the angle. So that's called the opposite side. In this case, this is the opposite side. But over here, where I picked this as the angle, then this becomes the opposite side because it's opposite to this angle. So in this case, we call this the opposite side. And this here would be the adjacent side because it's adjacent to the angle. So this is the adjacent side. So it doesn't matter how the triangle is oriented. We call the hypotenuse, the opposite side, and the adjacent side strictly to where the sides are relative to the right angle and to the angle in question, the angle that we labeled here. So if this is the angle that is in question, then this would be the adjacent side. Here that's the angle in question, so that's the adjacent side. So hopefully that is clear. Now, trigonometry relates these particular sides and angles to one another. For example, the sine of theta, the sine of this angle right here, by definition, is the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse h. So it's a ratio of the length of these two sides. So whatever the angle is, notice that if the angle gets bigger, the opposite side will get bigger. And so therefore, the opposite side is bigger when the angle gets bigger. That's a relationship for the function, the sine of theta. So it's simply a ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine of theta is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. In this case, you can see it's the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Notice that if the angle becomes very small, the hypotenuse and the adjacent side become almost equal in size. And eventually, when the angle goes to zero, the hypotenuse will be equal to the adjacent side, and so therefore the cosine of zero is equal to, one, is equal to a ratio that's going to be equal to one. All right, now about the tangent of theta. Remember, the tangent is the sine divided by the cosine. So if we take this divided by this, we'll get opposite divided by adjacent. That means that the tangent of theta can be defined as the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So in trigonometry, the tangent of this angle is equal to the ratio of the length of this side divided by the length of this side. So you can see that if the angle is small, the opposite side will be small, so the tangent of theta will be small. 
if the angle is very big, you can see the opposite side will be big, the adjacent side will be small, and the ratio will be, be big. The cotangent of theta is the inverse of the tangent. It's simply the tangent on t uh, flipped over. So we take this, we flip it over, so the cotangent of theta is the ratio of the adjacent side divided by the opposite side. And finally, the secant and the cosecant. Remember the secant. It's the inverse of the cosine. So we take the cosine, and we take the inverse of the cosine, we get h divided by the adjacent, so it's the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side, and the cosecant of theta is the inverse of the sine. So we find the sine here, the inverse is simply this flipped over, so it's h divided by the opposite side. h divided by the opposite side. And that is how the six trigonometric functions, the sine, the cosine, the tangent, the cotangent, the secant and the cosecant are defined simply by the ratios of the sides of the right triangle, right angle triangle, I should say. So again, the sine is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. The tangent is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And the cotangent of theta is the adjacent side divided by the opposite side. And finally, the secant is the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side, and the cosecant is the hypotenuse divided by the opposite side. That's how those six functions were defined. That's why we defined them in the first place, is to have those various ratios of the different sides of the triangle related to one another through that trigonometric function.